Conventional electrical flow will leave the positive of the battery at this particular point here and will flow in the direction shown. It will flow through the various wires. It will come down here and it will flow to this particular point. Now at this point we can see that there is two possible ways the current will flow. Now electric current has a property and the property is that it will always flow through the path of least resistance. Now the resistance of a switch is much lower than the resistance of a lamp. So what will happen, the electric current will flow through this particular switch here. Then we'll carry on and go back to the negative of the battery at which point it will circulate again. So we can see that we have the switch closed and the lamp off. And that's because the switch effectively short circuits the lamp. The current decides to flow through the switch because it has a much lower resistance than the lamp. But the key here for us is that when the switch is closed, we can see that the lamp is off. When the switch is open, we can see that the lamp is actually on. And what will happen under these circumstances is the current leaves the positive of the battery, it flows in the direction shown by these red lines, and it will arrive at this particular point here. And when it does, the current will only have one direction in which it can flow, and that direction is via the lamp. And the reason for that is that the switch is open, an open circuit, so the current cannot flow in that particular direction. So it continues through the lamp and it continues on to the negative of the battery. So electric current flow under these circumstances will continually flow around this circuit but will flow through the lamp lighting the lamp. For our purposes here what we're really interested in is the position of the switch. We can see that when the switch was open the lamp was on. Previously we noticed that when the switch was closed the lamp was off. Let's consider this circuit again and let's decide that the switch is the input and we're going to label the input of the switch as A and we're going to say that the lamp is the output and we're going to label that as F. Now over here I'm going to write down A and F and we're going to have a look at what F is for particular values of A. So let's decide that A is open as we can see here and when A is open we can see that the output F i.e. the lamp, is actually switched on. Let's write A and F down here again now. And on this occasion, let's not write open and on. Let's decide that an open switch, in fact, is a zero. And that a lamp, when it is on, is a one. So we can see that when the switch is open, F is on. And when we regard A as being a zero, the output F is is a 1. Now when input A is closed then output F is off and we can represent that as A being a 1 for when the switch is closed and F being a 0 from when the lamp is actually off. It's important that we don't take this circuit too literally. It is a good memory aid to help us understand gates. And we'll see some other examples later. It's usual when we're dealing with gates to consider their symbols. And this is a logic symbol for a knock gate. When we're dealing with a knock gate, we usually label its input with an A and its output with an F. And we now need to consider what happens with this particular gate when we place something at its input. Now when we place a zero at its input, what will happen is we'll get a one at its output. The output is always opposite the input. And because we're dealing with logic and two state devices, we need to remind ourselves that the opposite of a zero is a one and the opposite of a one is a zero. Another way we can consider this particular gate, a zero can be a low pulse like this. And what we get at the output here is a high pulse, where the pulse, when it's high, like this example here, it represents a 1, and when it's like this one here, it represents a 0. But what we can see is that the output F was not the input A. We can also regard the input here as a 1, and the output under these circumstances would be a 0, i.e., the output F is not A, and A was a 1, so the opposite of a 1 is a 0. 
Alternatively, we can think of this as being a high pulse going into the gate and a low pulse coming out. Where the high pulse represents a 1 and where the low pulse represents a 0. But what we can judge here is that the output F is not the input A. So let's look at a truth table for a knock gate. We remind ourselves that the input is A and that the output is F. So we come down here and we say, right, well, let's consider A. We know A can be a 0 and we know A can be a 1. So the output F, when A is a 0, will be a 1. And when A is a 1, the output F would be a 0. And we can say here that F is not A. Now there's a Boolean representation for this and the Boolean representation looks like this. We say that F is not and the horizontal bar there represents a not and we say not A. So we can see that we have a number of things we need to remind ourselves of when we look at not gates. We need to concern ourselves with its symbol, which is shown here. We need to concern ourselves with the truth table, which is shown here. And also the Boolean representation of a knock gate, which is shown here.